Here we are going to see how MA infinity processes are related to finite AR processes. Let's start with the properties of this infinite MA process, which you would have seen before. The expected value of YT in this process was mu, and here we have the variance and covariance. That's all as you've seen before. Turns out for that variance of YT to be finite, what we require is that the sum of the squared coefficients is smaller than infinity. And this will hold if the sum of the absolute values of the MA coefficients is smaller than infinity. We, always, we also call that the absolute summability condition. I'm not going to talk more about that, but that's actually quite important for stationarity. That will be another clip. So, if you have an infinite MA process, we have an infinite number of theta coefficients, and that allows very flexible autocorrelation functions to be proxied by an infinite MA process. However, that is of limited value in practice. The reason for that is that in reality we need to estimate these theta s coefficients. They need to be estimated from a finite number of observations of yt. And that is impossible. You can't estimate an infinite number of coefficients from a finite number of observations. So while that MA infinity process is very nice, theoretically it's of limited practical purpose, we somehow need to simplify this process. And there are two routes you can go. The first one would be to propose a finite MA process. So for instance, let's call it an MAQ process, where that order Q is finite. We have learned in the MA properties uh, clip that this implies that the covariance of yt and yt minus j is equal to zero for all j's larger than q. And that may not be appropriate. An example for that, perhaps we can remember, is when we looked at the unemployment rate, we had like very slowly decaying autocorrelation. And therefore, we don't really want to cut off the covariance function and therefore the autocorrelations. Now the second route we could go is that we reduce the flexibility by relating the MA coefficients to each other. So theta s, let, we can relate that to its previous value and the value beforehand, theta s minus 1, theta s minus 2, for instance. Now in an MA infinity process, n there is nothing that relates these coefficients. They can take dependent values independent from each other. What we do now is that we relate theta s to theta s minus 1 according to this. Theta s is equal to phi 1 times theta s minus 1 for any s larger than 1 and also recall that theta naught is equal to 1. With this we can write down an equation for theta 1. Theta 1 is phi 1 times theta naught and that is just phi 1. Then we can write down another equation for theta 2. That's phi 1 times theta 1 and that is phi 1 times phi 1 because theta 1 is 1. So that's phi 1 squared. And then we can write down a similar equation for theta 3 which is equal to so you go theta 3 is equal to phi 1 times theta 2 and since theta 2 is phi 1 squared, there's a 1 missing, we get phi 1 cubed and so forth. So you can see one value of the MA coefficient is related to the next. Now that means we really have an MA infinity process with only two parameters, mu and phi 1. So therefore let us just restate that MA infinity process. This is the generic process but now we replace for theta s our our relation above theta s is phi 1 to the power of s times epsilon t minus s. So where do we have that from? Why is theta s equal to phi 1 to the power of s? This is if you just generalize these relationships which we've written down just here you will realize that in general we can see that theta s is equal to phi 1 to the power of s. 
So we have a modified MA infinity process. It's a specific MA infinity process. Let's call that equation uh, ha the hash equation. Now, as it is still an MA infinity process, that means we don't that we don't have any cutoff from which onwards the covariance between yt and yt minus j is going to be equal to zero. So there will be non-zero covariance. However, th this equation still looks pretty messy. Can we simplify it? And so fortunately the answer is yes. Let's restate the hash equation. That's the messy one. Let's say our ugly caterpillar. Can we make a beautiful butterfly out of it? We need a little bit of algebra for that. The first element we need is that we restate that MA infinity process but just for one period lagged, so for yt minus 1. So that's going to be equal to the constant mu and then plus epsilon t minus 1. And now what I'll do is I'll write the epsilons at the same time above each other again. So it's plus epsilon t minus 1 but without coefficient and then plus theta 1 times epsilon t minus 2. Everything is just sort of shifted one period back. So why does that help us? Well the trick is to state actually the following line phi 1 times the hash equation at time negative 1. So phi 1 times y t minus 1. Now why we do that will become obvious. It's a stroke of genius it turns out. So we get phi 1 times mu, then plus phi 1 times epsilon t minus 1, just a phi 1 multiplied to each term. And now we can see if we compare the first and the third line that things actually could be cancelling out if we were to just calculate, if we were to take the theta, the hash equation minus the uh, phi 1 times the hash at times t minus 1 equation. Or in other words, if you write down y t minus phi 1 y t minus 1. What we get is all this. What we are left with is just these terms. Everything else cancels out. And then we can just use a little bit of algebra to bring this equation in a slightly nicer form. We isolate y t on the left hand side, bring everything else on the onto the right hand side and then we get this and we have this term at the beginning let us just label this term alpha okay and what we have here is an autoregressive process of order one now this is now our beautiful butterfly beautiful much simpler than the messy ma infinity process but we should remember it is in fact still an ma infinity process just with a restriction on the MA coefficients that are related with each other according to this. So keeping this in mind, what are the properties of this AR1 process? Well, what we can do is we can actually use the fact that we know it's an MA infinity process and we use the properties of the MA infinity process. Here they are. The expected value is equal to mu. Now from this little relationship here we can see that mu is just exactly the same as alpha divided by 1 minus phi 1. Now what about the variance? That was our variance equation for the infinite MA process. Now we replace the theta s with our phi 1 to the power s and we get this. Now let us write out the sum and then we can see more clearly. So we have sigma squared times 1 plus phi 1 squared plus phi 1 to the 4 and so forth. We just have uh, even powers and you may remember from maths high school or first year maths that this is just the same as sigma squared times 1 over 1 minus phi 1 squared if the absolute value of phi 1 is smaller than 1. Next we will look at the covariance between yt and yt minus j. That's again our general MA infinity formula. Again we replace our theta s values with phi 1 to the power of s and theta s plus j with phi 1 to the power of s plus j. Now we'll just reformulate that last term phi 1 to the power s plus j to phi 1 to the, to the s times phi 1 to the j. 
now we can realize that this last term is independent of the summation index s and therefore we can bring it in front of the summation so what we get is phi 1 to the j phi 1 to the j times sigma squared and the sum of phi 1 s times phi 1 s and that is just phi 1 to s so and now the next insight is that this last bit here everything that's black uh, behind that last equation sign this one we've encountered that just before that's the same as the variance of yt let's just scroll back and see that you can see here that's exactly what we had here it's the variance of yt so we can see that the covariance in this particular ma infinity process which turns out to be an ar1 process is related to the variance so we're going to use some new notation we call the covariance between yt and yt minus j we call that gamma j and the covariance between yt and yt minus zero which of course is just the variance of yt we call that gamma zero right, to be consistent with the covariance notation and then we can write that covariance relationship up here you can write that down in a shorter version so this is gamma j and this one here was gamma naught and that then implies that gamma j is equal to phi 1 to the j times gamma naught okay, so that means and you can also establish that that follows from here I leave that to you that gamma j is equal to phi 1 times gamma j minus 1 so the autocovariance at different time lags are related to each other again with that coefficient uh, phi 1 now let's recap what have we seen so far we could get from an MA infinity to an AR1 process by restricting the MA coefficients theta s as follows theta s is equal to phi 1 times theta s minus 1 this is how we got to an MA process but that's actually you know a quite restrictive way of linking them together so what if that is a little too restrictive well let's loosen it one step loosen the belt by one hole and we could relate theta s with theta s minus 1 and theta s minus 2 as such if we then go through all the algebra again we, which we've done before for the AR1 case this will lead to an AR2 case and of course that will generalize to ARP processes as well Okay, so we have linked MA infinity processes to finite AR processes.